All right, ladies and gentlemen, joining us in our media center now is our Grand Marshal for tonight's 40th running of the NASCAR All-Star Race, NASCAR Hall of Famer Chad Knauss. Um, Chad Knauss, of course, tuned Jimmy Johnson on the verge, on, on the way to 81 victories, seven cup championships, and a record four NASCAR All-Star Race victories. So not only did Jimmy and Chad capture four All-Star Race wins, Hendrick Motorsports in the 40-year history of the All-Star Race is also the all-time winningest organization of the All-Star Race with 11, 11 wins. So that's not bad, huh? Um, HMS has also recorded five total wins in the NASCAR Cup Series here at North Wilkesboro Speedway, four points races, and of course, last year's win with Kyle Larson in the NASCAR All-Star Race. So Chad, welcome. We're so glad to have you here. And we'll go ahead and get it out of the way quick. I understand you were just watching a pretty fast lap there. Talk about that. Yeah, uh, sorry I'm a little tardy. We wanted to watch Kyle make his lap uh, in the round of Fast 12 up there in Indianapolis, which he did an amazing job. So proud of the effort that those guys have put in. He's locked into the Fast 6. So that's going to make our jobs a little bit more complicated a little bit later this afternoon, getting him here in time and all of that. But that's, that's perfectly OK. Uh, really excited and proud of the involvement from Hendrick Motorsports. Mr. Hendrick giving us the opportunity to show the Hendrick way up there in Indianapolis is pretty cool. So and it's an honor to be here tonight to uh, to be the Grand Marshal. Um, one, one little nugget here, 1997, the last race here, right? Wasn't that right? 96. 96, excuse me. We won that race with the 24 car, and I was a tire changer. So I was up on top of this building uh, when it was on Victory Lane. You gotta be pretty old to remember that. Very cool. So ago. from tire changer to vice president of competition now at yeah. Hendrick Motorsports, as they are also celebrating their 40th anniversary this year. So please raise your hand and state your name and affiliation. We'll start with Steve back in the back, and we'll take a few questions. Steve Post Motor Racing Network. Chad, the um, alternative tire, uh, the optional tire, just kind of your take on the process, how we got there, and what you expect to see, and then actually the process going forward, depending on what we learned tonight. Just your, your thoughts on it overall. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's something that we as an industry have, have spoken about quite a lot over the years, um, learning from the... Uh, the efforts in F1 and how they approach it with the alternative tires. Um, I think coming here last year, running the rain tire, uh, being that soft compound, and it actually did well. We ran the rain tire at Richmond with a similar compound. Um, so I think that gave Goodyear some some comfort in, in creating this tire. Uh, I think we all remember what happened at Bristol, put on a, a heck of a good show there with the tires you know, literally wearing out. It's not what we expected, but it ended up being a pretty cool thing. And I think that's what really pushed this forward to say, okay, let's get some tires that are you know, potentially gonna wear out and, and see how the guys manage the race. So I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. What we saw yesterday, or whatever day it was, it wasn't raining, uh, Friday, I guess it was. Um, it, was uh, it was faster, for sure had a very steep fall off and then it would kind of level off. Uh, but the one thing that was really curious as I was watching is the track really rubbered in a lot. Uh, so managing the differential between the, the yellow and the red is gonna be pretty fun. There's definitely gonna be some strategy calls today. Chad, how um, unusual is it for a newly repaved track like that to start to rubber in as quickly as it was? Yeah, um, a couple of reasons. I was out there with Swifty, uh, Steve, the other day, looking at it and the way that you guys have, have poured this track, it's definitely very porous. Um, the, the aggregate in there is very coarse, so it definitely is pulling the tire apart, which is good. Um, and then the soft rubber is definitely laying the rubber down as well. The heat today is really going to impact it as well. So I think you're really gonna see the groove open up, which it did in practice, and could provide some good racing. Let's go here, Matt. Matt Weaver, Sports Knot. Um, do you guys have a handle on like the crossover point between these two tires and how that could kind of affect what that looks like tonight? Well, we have we have the same information everybody else does. We feel like that we paid pretty good attention. Uh, you know, you're going to get you're going to get to that 25 lap range, and the the curve is going to definitely start to flatten out. Uh, it looks like it starts about four tenths faster than maybe the yellow does, um, but then the yellow hangs on a little bit more flat. So it's going to be really interesting. I think you're going to see guys. If it was me, which I'm not a crew chief anymore, though I don't have to make these decisions, but I think you'll see guys in the back probably put on some reds, and you'll see the guys in the front, you know, maybe lean more, a little bit more towards the yellows. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Rodney says he wants to take the red tire to New Hampshire and make it just a new primary short track tire. Are you in favor of that? It depends. I, I'm fine with it. Um, here's the thing. Having the options is what creates the opportunity for passing. 
right? I don't know that this year is the best year for us to take multiple compounds to a racetrack, but I think that's what we need to do. The, the way to improve passing in our sport is to create a differential in speed between the cars. If everybody's running the same tire all the time, it's not going to promote a lot more passing. Does that make sense? Having options and people doing um, unique strategies, that's what's going to create the, the passing and the excitement. So taking that whole thing to, to New Hampshire, that's fine. I don't have a problem with it. I don't know that it's going to solve your issue. Go here to Dustin. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. As you noted with, with, with Kyle, and now it's a, a tighter window. So if he, for some reason he's late or something, is Justin Allgaier getting the car? Or what's the plan? Or just the car's just going to sit there? It's going to sit there and look pretty. We'll, we'll save it for another event. Um, yeah, it just, it, it, doesn't, it just doesn't. I'm not going to say it, it, it. The way things are working out, all of our cards are in getting Kyle here. And that's the plan, um, to put Justin in, have him run the open. Uh, we went down that road. We thought about it. We spoke with NASCAR. We came to a collective decision. That's not the best route for all of us. Um, it would get pretty messy pretty quickly. Um, you know, where, where is it fair? Is it fair to the people that are in the open or not fair to the people in the all-star? You know, like all of that stuff just gets kind of crazy. So uh, better off just to make sure that our helicopters and our planes light off and we get them on the ground and we get them on a golf cart and get them here. Is there, is there a situ situation where... It just makes sense not to run the car tonight or if I mean I guess if Kyle wins the poll you just are, are not going to run and make the effort because of all the, the things no man we're, he's on the poll we're, we're bringing him down here okay. yeah we've got a <clears throat> excuse me we've got a very tight timeline um, we've worked very closely with our aviation department we've worked closely with uh, the track folks here um, the security folks and um, you know all of the airports and everything that's going on so we've got a plan um, we've got we've got to make the times um, but if he shows up and the gates closed they're racing. We're not. We're clearly not going to be in it. One last thing. I know there's still a lot to get through with this weekend and next weekend with him. But I think the the indication has been is that, you know, I think Kyle has said in the past really doesn't want this to be. Hope hope this isn't a one off. That if this happens again, uh, with somebody with your experience with doing the Garage 56, uh, how much of an interest would it would it be if he does this again to become to be more involved with that or you know, maybe be a leading role in that, like as early as next year with all, all that you've done. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. We have, we have a car. <clears throat> so that's first step, right? We got a driver. Well, okay, you know, we'll see what goes next. Uh, we'll, see how, we'll see how it goes. Things are going really well. Uh, really proud of the partnership that we've got with Errol McLaren um, and Chevrolet on this project. It's really been a lot of fun. Campy's doing a great job up there. You know, he's really enjoying it. That's definitely his element. Um, but what happens in the future, you just, you just never know. I don't know. I, I, everything interests me. You know, you catch me on the right day. We'll see. Yeah, it's Steve Reed from the Associated Press. Um, I, I'm just curious. Honest question. I mean, are you floored by what he's doing up there, or are you not shocked, or wh where do you kind of weigh in on this? I mean, you just like it's Kyle, or what do yeah, you think? A little bit of both, to be honest with you. You know, we were just sitting up there in the the uh, transporter, the 48 car, watching it, and you're just like, my gosh, like I just can't, I can't believe he just, you know, he's P was P1. I don't know where he is now to P2. And it's just like, my goodness, like, how is it that happening? You know, very limited track time, did a couple of tests, you know, was able to go up there and he, he holds a pretty wheel as anybody I've seen in the in-car camera, right? Like he gets it and he's just a phenomenal talent. He's, he's so emotionally stable um, that it's just, it's amazing. You can put him in just about any environment and he's gonna excel. Ready to be in? Uh, ben White, uh, Fayetteville Observer, Speed Sport. I want to go back in history a little bit. You, you alluded to the 96 win here. First off, I'm sorry, I, I should know this. What tire were you changing that day? And then <laughs> what know. do you remember? Because what I remember, I was here as a little bit of a black cloud because we weren't coming back. I mean, it was the yep. last race at Wilkesboro. Yep. So in your take, what, what do you remember most about that day? Uh, I'm trying to, I don't remember a whole lot, to be honest with you. Uh, that was a long time ago. Um, I don't really remember a whole lot about the race. I was changing left side tires at that point. Uh, we had three tire changers back, or maybe I did, 96, I might have been right rear. I don't, see, I don't even remember that. I think I was right rear tire changer, uh, to be honest with you. Maybe somebody can look that up. Um, but, um, you know, that that period of time, it was, it was really good stuff. I remember we were battling uh, Terry Labonte for the championship. Um, that year pretty tightly and I know there was a lot of focus on what the five car was doing um, you know we had a pretty big rivalry between the 24 and the five back then so it was kind of cool uh, that's probably what I remember the most um, from that race honestly I think it rained did it rain 
Man, that's going way back there. I, I think it might be rained. I think it had some rain. Not during the race, but I think prior to. I don't know where that race fell, but I know when, uh, with three races to go that season, there was one point separating Terry. Yeah, it was tight. Yeah. Really tight. Let's go back to Davey back there. What? Davey Siegel with Sirius XM. Chad, the meticulous nature of you and your career when you were crew chiefing played a big part in all the success that you had and the scheduling that Kyle has is obviously very meticulous down to the minute as well. Do you stress out over that? Do you kind of geek out over that? Like, how do you look at and approach what you guys as an organization are kind of trying to accomplish here? Yeah, I'm really proud of what we're able to do. Um, if you look at the folks that we've got at Hendrick Motorsports, everybody is just all in all the time. And uh, Ryan Glenn is our, our team manager, and he's coordinating all the logistics with his staff um, to get you know, along with Hendrick Aviation and, you know, our, our transporter drivers and our, our folks that handle the, the golf carts and all of that, like everybody's, everybody's bought in. And I think if you look at the way that we approach things, the Garage 56 thing somebody mentioned a moment ago, you know, like we, we attack all of these projects all in and everybody takes a sense of ownership. And, you know, everybody at Hendrick Motorsports has got a lot of pride in what's going on in Indianapolis right now. So it's pretty amazing. I mean, I've got a, a minute by minute right here in my, right here right so when he's got to leave who's on the planes who's on the helicopters you know i mean all that stuff right there so it's it's pretty awesome what what we're able to do when we put our minds to it really proud of everybody at hendrick motorsports jeff and jeff are there now mr h is obviously going next sunday are you going to be there too and then come back to charlotte what's nope. your schedule nope i'm staying here i'm gonna try to make sure that you know we're prepared for when Whatever happens, happens down here. And uh, we get Kyle in and out where he needs to be and uh, just to try to help here. So, you know, Jeff Andrews has got a very strong IndyCar background. That's where he came from. So he's got a bit of a passion towards this project. So he's, he's, he's full in on it. Yeah, from my perspective, the Coca-Cola 600 is still a pretty big deal. Let's go back here to Barry, OK? <laughs> uh, yeah, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcasting Corporation and WAKG. Last week, I had a chance to spend some time with Ray Everham. We talked about the evolution of uh, the crew chief's role. What's your perspective on that, uh, how that position has evolved just in the last five years? Yeah, it's changed significantly, obviously. Uh, if you go back to the days, you know, probably just prior to Everham showing up, the, <clears throat> excuse me, the crew chief was just a really good mechanic, you know, and he, he was the guy that knew how to build the cars, set them up, put them together, and and, and get the details. And then as that generation with Ray coming in, that's when it really started to get more towards an engineering-based type position, or at least uh, needing an engineering-based type team. Um, the time with, you know, from me to, to maybe when my career ended, it, it changed a lot. You know, um, I needed to run sim, I needed to go to the wind tunnel, I needed to, to build shocks, I needed to do all of those things very early on in my career. And now, you know, the way the sport is, you've got, you've got lead engineers with multiple secondary engineers, you've got a uh, shock specialist, you've got your car chief that handles the crew and the car. You know, it's a lot different. Uh, crew chiefs now, they make sure everything's going smoothly and then they, you know, have a big hand in calling the strategy. Um, I think everybody, what's really interesting about our sport is every crew chief has his strength. And now whether it be aerodynamics, whether it be strategy, whether it be you know, shocks or whatever the situation is. And then we, you know, especially at Hendrick Motorsports, try to fill those gaps in around him. You know, where his weaknesses are or where he's maybe not as strong, we try to build up around him with whether it be an engineering staff or a good strategist or whatever that may be. Last question with Deb, real quick. Deb Williams, Auto Week. Uh, Chad, to kind of expand on what you were just saying, when it comes to race day, does the crew chief have the final say in strategy or where does the war room fit into that now? Yes, absolutely. The crew chief is ultimately responsible for all the decisions that are made, so he gets the final say. Um, again, we try to build up and give him all the information he needs to, to make that call. Um, we have a, a huge resource at Hendrick Motorsports that helps contribute to what's going on at the racetrack. They're in communication with the guys here at the track all the time, whether it be practice, qualifying, or the event. And, um, you know, they just feed the crew chief and try to guide him best with our simulation tools and experience. But ultimately, it goes down to the crew chief. Okay. Thank you. Giving the command to start the 40th running of the NASCAR All-Star Race tonight, Chad Knauss. Chad, good luck to all of your teams. Thank you.